Uh, I'm lucky enough to chair this conference called eTech. It's the Emerging Technologies Conference, happens once a year. And this year we're looking at cities, the, the tech around cities, uh, how cities are changing us, and how products are changing. And so part of that are mechanisms and mechanics. Our next speaker is going to be speaking at that, teaching people how to make a mousetrap powered car. But in her spare time, she goes to Kenya and builds kites to help people. So please welcome Dustin Roberts. Thanks. So I want to talk a little bit about today about a group I joined called Engineers Without Borders and how to build a kite aerial photography rig for mapping sites that aren't mapped in any other way in uh, Kenya and Cambodia and some of our site trials that we go to. So Engineers Without Borders is a nonprofit organization uh, we go to developing communities around the world and partner with them and try to make them more sustainable. So they have their own irrigation, they have their own ways of uh, building things, and we try to keep it all local um, as much as we can. There's professional and student chapters of EWB all over the country and colleges. Um, I'm part of the New York professional chapter, and we have projects in Usulama, Kenya, in Brazil, in uh, Cambodia, all over the world. So now, what is a cap? What is kite aerial photography? You can see this guy uh, controlling his cap mechanism with a transmitter, and it's controlled by little RC servos that do things like move the camera around and release the shutter, so you can take pictures from a bird's eye view. It's not a new idea. The picture on top here is from uh, 1906 of San Francisco after an earthquake. Uh, bottom left is from Scotland, and bottom right is actually a picture from Burning Man last year from a fisheye view lens attached to a, a camera on a cap. So the first cap we had was made by Will, a civil engineer, and it was a little bit spindly, but it worked well. He used it to map out his site in Cambodia. He's the project manager for that, for Engineers Without Borders. And the Cambodia pictures actually came out really well. This is a collage of a bunch of them he took. Uh, what happened is here is that earth and levee got destroyed by a flood a few years back and they needed to, a way to rebuild this and reroute the water and also provide transportation across the levee. So the cap mechanism was really the only way they had to image this whole scene from a bird's eye view so they could really plan out the course of the river and plan out the irrigation for the fields around it. In the next slide, you'll, that's the finished project. You have the, the dam that they built through engineers that have borders that provides transportation across the levee and irrigation for the water. And that wouldn't have been really been possible without being able to see this from hundreds of feet up in the air like we can with the cap mechanism. Unfortunately, Will lent his cap to students from the student chapter at Columbia, and uh, they broke it. Uh, he didn't really know what was wrong with it. I wasn't sure if it was the hardware or the transmitter. So he gave it to my coworker Larry and I who, uh, instead of refurbishing it, we decided just to completely redesign it. We started out in a program we used called Inventor, made a whole new 3D model, made it adjustable to fit different kinds of cameras, 